I'm just really interested when it comes to people like yourself who have such a, you know, a rich resume and have accomplished so many different and interesting things in life. Um, and, you know, how, how would you, how do you approach, um, you know, uh, introducing yourself to people um, in life when it comes to just presenting yourself? How would you describe your personality? Like in, in general, my question is, you know, um, how do you like, um, uh, what sort of first impression would you like people to have uh, about you? That's actually a, a very hard question. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't like, I don't like to be defined by, I guess, only one thing, right? Yeah. I mean, I am a, I'm a writer Uh, but I also, I have plenty of other projects as well. Um, I, I write both fiction and nonfiction. Um, I teach, I consult. So I, I mean, I do a number of different uh, projects. So I, I know a lot of people have sort of referred to me as a journalist. I don't think of myself as a journalist. Yeah. Um, I think for, you know, first and foremost, professionally, I do think of myself as a writer mm -hmm. Um Uh, but, you know, also I, I try to sort of have a, a purpose with my writing, too, where I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to highlight things that I think that the general public should be aware of. And I try to do it in, in a, a fun and entertaining way so that um, sort of more complex geopolitical subjects can be a little more accessible to the general public and more interesting to them. Right. Um, yeah. I think a lot of the issues, especially today, that we're dealing with in terms of a uh, slide away from democracy and towards authoritarianism and uh, corruption and these types of things, they're very complex, they're very nuanced. And so I do try to use my writing to to sort of break all that down and to use my my courses, all kinds of different things that I do to to break those things down and to present them to the general public in, in a very accessible way so that they can better understand it. And so that they're more interested in understanding it. So it doesn't seem like some big, you know, confusing thing that they can't get into, but to make them understand how it affects them individually in their daily lives to get them, you know, maybe a little more interested in, in participating. Yeah. Um, so it really seems that, you know, you have um, passion towards, I guess enlightenment is not, you know, the most accurate word, but just spreading awareness to people towards topics that are relevant to them. Um, how how did you develop that? Is this, you know, is this um, an objective that you have, um, you know, um, stated for yourself? Is this uh, like a natural urge? Uh, in terms of doing it, or is it something that you have established throughout your experiences for your life and so on? Well, I think these things develop, right? I mean, um, when I first when I first got out of school uh, after graduate school, and I started working as a journalist, yeah. and I certainly went into it sort of mission oriented, right? I really I was a bit naive, I think, at the time, but it really was this idea that you know, I can bring the news to the world. Um, my time in Washington, you know, quickly uh, quashed all of that naivete. But um, then, you know, when I went to work at CIA, it also was mission oriented and um, was, you know, I was very much driven by uh, serving the country and serving our values, protecting our values. Um, and so th then even when I left, I don't know that it was a conscious thing that I was doing. Uh, until more recently. Um, when I first wrote Victor in the Rubble, for example, my first book, that one was much more of a catharsis. It was much more dealing with uh, some of the trauma and strange experiences and uh, absurdities that I had uh, gone through uh, working in CIA and particularly within uh, the war on terror. Mm -hmm. And um, Then the second book came along, which just uh, Victor in the Jungle, which was much more about sort of the adventure of all of that. But I think this sort of uh, mission-driven writing came much more after that with the uh, 2016 elections in the United States. Mm -hmm. so that's when I was hired by the Center for Public Integrity to uh, cover the, the Mueller investigation into Russian influence in the election. Uh, and given my background as both a journalist and as an intelligence officer, Uh, I, I think I was well-placed to try to 
explain that complex uh, issue to a general audience. And the more that I studied that and did research on that and really understood what was what was happening behind the scenes, uh, not even just behind the scenes, what was happening publicly that we could yeah. all see. Um, but how all of that was developing um, brought back a lot of that mission to me uh, where I was like, okay, you know, people actually re really need to understand this. We need to put the politics of all of this aside and we really need to understand this for the national security threat that it is. And so all of that then went into the third book, Victor in Trouble, um, which really goes into a lot of these influence operations and, and disinformation. And a lot of that now has been the focus of uh, of my work for the past you know, year or so. 